Welcome today. It is uh, September 25th, and we are excited to have a great presentation on LinkedIn. And Jamie, who is the uh, chief coach and CEO founder of Career Agility System, is going to be our speaker. She uh, would like to give a little more details about herself, but um, I just really appreciate her stepping in and giving this presentation um, with her vast experience. I know that y'all are going to learn a lot. So I'll hand it over to Jamie. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me today. And uh, it's great for all of you to join our session. So uh, I'm going to grab some slides to share real quick. And while she's doing that, just uh, some housekeeping. So y'all are welcome to share your LinkedIn links in the chat. We are very welcome to do that. We are going to um, save most of the questions for the end. But if you do have a question, you're welcome to put that in the chat. And then I'll just monitor that and ask most of those at the end. Um, and then please feel free, you know, during the, uh, go ahead and have your mute button on while uh, the presentation is going so we can have a clear recording. Okay, awesome. thanks, Jamie. Thanks, yeah. So um, a little bit about me. I'm here in East Dallas. I've been in Dallas for a bit over 20 years. Uh, I actually was um, computer science major, spent over 20 years in tech worked at a number of different firms that are headquartered here or have tech companies here working remote as well. Um, six, about six and a half years ago, I started thinking about what was next. Uh, you know, tech can be, especially as you move up into more senior level roles, kind of demanding and a lot to take on. And I also have two boys. Uh, so I started thinking about what do I want to do next that offers me more flexibility. Um, I've been in your shoes a lot between buyouts and bankruptcies and tech companies going up and down. I've probably rebranded myself and transitioned about 10 times while I was in tech. Um, and so taking what I, that kind of work I've done and what I really enjoyed in tech was growing talent and seeing them get to their next level of their career and being successful in their careers. I started to uh, become a career coach. And also what came along that was resume writing. So now I predominantly help people advance their careers between personal branding, LinkedIn optimization, uh, and you know coaching them through how to network, market, sell themselves, and get to where they're going next in their career. And so I'm excited to share just some tips and strategies and how you can better set yourself apart and leverage a tool like LinkedIn to be able to help you accelerate finding that next great opportunity, networking with the right people uh, to get you into, um, you know, back employed. So a lot of times when you go into, you know, everyone did great in introducing themselves, uh, but oftentimes when you're in a big room and you're networking, do you know how to really, you know, say your name, but then go on to the, I do what for who, what's, what do you, what do you really do in employment? So yes, you might be a project manager, but what's the value at the end of the day? What are you making sure things are on time? Are you saving money? Are you generating revenue? What's in the end, the value that someone's going to go, let's talk more. What, like, how did you do that? What, what's the patterns of success in your career? So that's really important to get cl clarify, especially as you get out there and network or update your LinkedIn profile is getting really clear on how you introduce yourself both online and in person. And so um, what I like to say, what I do is I help professionals unlock career and business breakthroughs and covering insights to make the intangible tangible. I, and that's what I did a lot of my career, I ran professional services lines of business. I look at what it is my team is doing, but really communicate the value that we provide. And each of you are a service to others and to companies. And so my goal is to help better communicate the value you deliver every day based on your experiences and your skill set. And so I know it can be frustrating. I am sure you could raise your hand. You've applied to hundreds of jobs online. So have hundreds of other people have applied to the same jobs. And so just applying to jobs online is, gets frustrating. Um, also not understanding how LinkedIn works in terms of applying to jobs, people finding you on LinkedIn. So I'm going to walk you through just some tips to help you better understand how LinkedIn works and how you can better set yourself up for success with your profile and engaging on LinkedIn and growing your network and getting in front of opportunities. And please ask questions along the way. Feel free to put something in chat. I'll also have Q&A at the end for anything that comes up as I'm um, kind of sharing some best practices. So 
before you go into updating LinkedIn and using LinkedIn, we're going to do a little bit of pre-work and that's really honing in on your personal brand before you can really get yourself out there and leverage the platform. Then we're going to cover profile tips for LinkedIn, how to engage on LinkedIn. And then for those who are wanting to use content as a way to set yourself apart on LinkedIn, that doesn't mean you need to go create thousand word articles, but things that you could do to engage and be seen more. I'm going to cover some tips there as well. <clears throat> so first, the number one thing for you to really hone in on is that that value statement, that personal brand, what you do for who and the value you provide. And the really what a personal brand is doing is it's helping you own the conversation of what people think about you. You want to leave an impression so that when you're not in the room, someone's going to remember you to go, oh, I met Jonathan and he's a great, you know, engineer or project manager and I'd love to talk to him more because he's, you know, he's managed these multi-million dollar portfolios. And so there's things you need to say in your introduction that's going to be memorable. So people will remember to bring you up for an opportunity that comes up wanting to reconnect, wanting to have coffee, you know, want to be interesting to have the next one-on-one -on -one to get to know you more. So you really need to own your personal brand so you can influence what people think about you and what they know you as in terms of what you're capable of doing. And so what I try to do is get really clear for my clients on what they do for who and deliver what value by doing what, right? So it's, um, then you can reorganize the words to make it really clean, but like getting to a five to 10 word sentence that you can introduce yourself to go, hello, I'm so-and-so, I help these kinds of organizations save time and energy by um, optimizing workflows, utilizing XYZ tools or certain industries. So we want to get to that clean sentence. And so a lot of times that's really hard. Um, you know, who on here could tell me what their personal brand promises today? Who who could do this? Who has their one sentence? Anyone want to try it out? <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, okay. I have on mine to help people know their dignity and worth. And how do you do that? How do I do that? It, by helping them understand that they have gifts and talents and their value is not compared to anybody else. Got it. Got it. Great. Anyone else want to give it a try? Well, I'm going to give you some tips on how to figure this out so that, because this is really important getting into your LinkedIn profile, because again, this one liner is often what I have in people's headline on LinkedIn. So it's really clear when someone pulls up your profile, they know exactly what you do for who and what you're delivering. So what I like to say is you are comprised of a lot of things at this point in your lifetime. You've got lots of stories. You've got lots of experiences. You've got a lot of skills you've gained. You've done, you've accomplished a lot. And so these are all what I call your Lego building blocks that we need to reorganize and shape that then drives what your resume is going to look like. We reorganize it to then fill out your LinkedIn profile. We reorganize it to create your bio. We reorganize it to deliver your, you know, your talk track when you're going out networking or speaking or going through an interview. Like all these parts and pieces help you in a career transition or just growing your network and awareness that you exist and what you do. So one thing is just thinking about all the things you've done and inventorying it to start to see where are their patterns. Look at your resume. Where do you see you've got some clear successes or things that are different from your experience that maybe no one else has done before? <clears throat> now, what happens if we don't have a personal brand? We ramble when we introduce ourselves. People can't refer us to others so they don't understand what you do and, and what you're looking for. Um, you know, if you're running your own business or becoming a fractional or freelancer, business is going to pass you by because they don't see how you're going to help them. Your reputation gets lost. You don't stand out. You might also look salesy versus being trusted, transparent, you know, someone that you want to partner with. 
And so we want to get to your identity where it's authentic, where it's differentiated. It might be aspirational. Some of you have talked about banking pivots, transitioning into new roles. So your brand right now may be aspirational in terms of I've been in ministry and I'm taking my skills for organizing people to do great things. And so it's just, you know, taking what you've done before and and putting it into the future. It's going to just help you stand out. And it's going to grow your network. And it's going to help you also build confidence. Getting clear on this one sentence alone is going to help you be really confident in getting out there and talking to people. And then what normally would happen after that is having a few pillars of successes you dive deeper into that you could have a talk track around. So again, we need to inventory a lot of the things that shape us in our careers today, the experiences, the skills, the uh, accomplishments, what superpowers do you have? So you can get to that one sentence of I serve who, getting what results by doing what. So um, what I like to say is here's some, some areas to think about in terms of values and outcomes. Where have you saved or generated revenue? Where have you reduced risks? Where have you sped up processes, improve efficiency, grow talent? Um, you can go on and on in, in terms of what kinds of accomplishments you can be talking about. Turning around an organization, keeping a portfolio of projects on time under budget, high quality product delivery, reduced errors. So those are the kinds of things to be thinking out in terms of the value and the outcomes you deliver. What's your story? So what have you done that's that's part of who makes you you, what you're bringing to the table, what's going to set you apart? Are there certain things your colleagues think about you in terms of like, you're determined, you're reliable, <clears throat> you're a hard worker, or you're set the bar high? Why do people want to work with you or do business with you? Are there patterns to what people are saying about you? So this could be an exercise where you ask a few former colleagues of yours, ask friends of yours, hey, what makes me fabulous? You know, having worked together for so long, you know, what made you want to, you know, pull me onto your teams? Ask a former boss. Um, why did you hire me? Why did you keep me, grow me, et cetera? Get feedback to help kind of see and uncover insights about you, your strengths that you may not be really aware of until you talk to some people. And then this inventory, inventory your soft skills, inventory your hard skills, inventory transferable skills. Again, for those of you doing pivots, your things that you're doing with respect to relating to people, talking to people, selling, communicating, those are all transferable to all kinds of different careers. And so be thinking about those transferable skills that you want to highlight as part of your narrative, as part of your resume. <clears throat> So then the other thing in thinking about what that one sentence is, is thinking about what are you, what do you believe you are better than others at? Do you get things done faster? Do you see more opportunities or gaps or challenges more? Are you better at connecting the dots or connecting people? Are you better at building relationships? Are you better about communicating intangibles? Are you better about experiences? Like what is it in your past and in comparing yourself to peers, what do you believe you are the best at? That's going to help you think about that one-liner as well. And so to help draft your brand promise, first is, again, doing that inventory of experience, value, accomplishments, what you think you're really great at. Then thinking about how do you want your brand promise to be? Is it the biggest thing you've accomplished you want to talk about? Is it, again, are you pivoting and this is more aspirational? Do you have repeated successes? Is there something unique as you talk to people? Is this something that's resonating with others? So like just because part of this next exercise or what you would do as homework is draft a few potential personal brand statements and talk to a colleague, talk to a friend, Use it at network, use it, go to another networking event, a meeting and use it and see if it resonates. Do you feel comfortable talking about it? And after you use it a few times, you'll refine it. You'll get it to where it's really clear on that is what I do. And now let me go tailor my LinkedIn and my resume, tying all the successes to what I'm bringing to the table, what that one personal brand statement is. So 
that's piece one in getting ready to really optimize your usage of LinkedIn is honing in on that, what you do for who and the value you provide. Step two is being really clear on your target job. Those are the two most critical things you need to hone in on to do some really quick tweaks to your LinkedIn profile so recruiters can find you and so that if you're using LinkedIn to apply to jobs, you show up the way you want to show up in searches on LinkedIn. <clears throat> Any questions so far before I dive into LinkedIn 101? <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to keep on rolling. Okay, so some things on LinkedIn. Your headline is one of the most weighted things that the recruiter side of LinkedIn searches on. And so it is really important you have your target job title or job titles and your personal brand promise in that headline. You've got 220 characters. You can add in more key skills, more key titles. That's what you want to do is maximize that headline space, because that's also the first thing in a recruiter search. When the recruiter gets a list of results, the headline is the first thing they see alongside your picture to determine if they want to look at your profile further. So this is an example of um, one of my clients I worked on where it was, you know, He's a global CRO, CXO for security firms. And then I, you know, put his brand promise in there again. It's heavy into the, the skills mm -hmm. he has, his operations, his business development, his sales, um, and wh what kinds of firms that he's looking at. He's very much 100% focused on cybersecurity. The next area to get clean on that is the other piece that's heavily weighted and part of the search results is your job titles and your experience. And in particular, it's your last two job titles you've held is the what they see and is what is weighted. And so what I like to say is job titles are apples and oranges. Project manager at one company is different from project manager at another. Different areas, different, like was it strategic projects? Was it operational projects? Was it implementation projects? And so again, what I like to do here, because it's 100 characters, is integrate in more example job titles of what it is you did or key skills that is relevant to your job search. So great, you were a founder and CEO, but and you're pivoting into working for someone in corporate. Really what I do is operations, business development, strategic partnerships, like this might be more of a COO or a CRO kind of person going forward. So think about those functional areas you oversee or the things that you do to maximize the 100 characters in that job title. If you're currently not working, one of the things you can do, if, especially if you are considering or are doing some side either volunteer work or some side consulting projects, which I often recommend doing to fill the gap, go on Upwork. It's a great place to do some freelance work. You can show you are currently working for yourself as a freelancer and put your this kind of job title in there, can say consultant, and then you can go project management, strategic initiatives, chief of staff. That's the kind of thing that you can do. And then you say you're open to these kinds of opportunities, again, to fill the gap, get some experience to help with a transition, et cetera. Um, so that was why I was just highlighting a show you're doing something right now on LinkedIn under experience. If you're volunteering, you can put that on your LinkedIn profile. This is one of my clients where this is actually a volunteer role, um, but we put it as one of his current engagements because he is currently active in um, doing work here. Um, list the things that you're looking to do. And again, there are researches where recruiters will want to will only search for people who are looking that are currently employed. I mean, what was the website again for the freelancing? Upwork. Upwork. Yeah, that's the best one. I've been on a lot of different platforms. It's the most professional, the most uh, expansive in terms of the opportunities. And you'll create a profile there. You may need to spend a little bit, like 20 bucks to get up and running. Um, but it can start to build out. There's lots of project management, part-time project management part-time business analysis, part-time, you name it, um, just to kind of get some, you know, revenue in the door. 
I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't get the name. Is it up UP work? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll put it in the chat before right. at the end of the I'll session so you can Thank see you. it. Thank you. Thank um, you. You can add skills to your profile. You can actually add up to 100. If you don't know what to add, what I would do is look at some of the jobs that you're interested in on LinkedIn and see what skills those jobs are showing and add those skills to your profile. You can change, you can alter your skills um, as you and as you gain more skills, add them to your profile. Ranking does matter. The top 10 is most important on your skills. So you, there is a way you can organize your skills. Endorsements don't mean anything at this point in time on LinkedIn. And you don't need a link. So there's a new thing where you can link skills to experience. Link five, they means nothing either. It's just more... Um, when the your profile is printed to PDF, it'll show those skills and it looks really hairy when you link everything to you. It's just, it, it's not very, no one's going to want to look at it basically. Um, again, so back to that. Question, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I had a question. So you, yeah, thanks. You just mentioned um, the, the top, top 10 skills matter the most. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a section in the about that has the, I think you can put five yes. up, up top. And then within each job, as you said, you can also add them. Now, ultimately, I think it links the two, but so what, where are the top 10? Is that like, where, cause I don't, I don't, like I have the top five and then within my, my roles, I typically repeat those skills to emphasize, cause so I, you know, and then skill. have a few extras, right? Like up to 10 per job is, is the most I'll do. When you edit your whole skills section, there's going to be one of those hamburger menus mm -hmm. where you can move around this, like you move your skills up and down. And okay, if I have so some time at the end, I'll show you how to do that. All right. So it's separate from that, that piece. It's separate. But, but, it, but at the top five, when you do that, do they end up being the top five at the top of your skill section then? So you... Now, that, see, the skill section is completely different. So that's where you have to go in and manually move the skills All around. Right. What'll happen is the top two in your skill section is what automatically shows up on your profile. So if someone downloads your profile, they oh. just see the top two. They have to click in the skills to see your whole list. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't know that. So it's a yeah. top two. And then, so they are separate. So you can manage these actually independently, although yes. they should be, I presumably be aligned, but they're not, not the same. Got it. Thank you. So the next thing, there is a section called recommendations. Again, back to how the algorithm works. Work to get at least six recommendations on your profile because it's going to give you more points when you're searched on, you apply to a job, et cetera. And it doesn't have to be former bosses. It can be colleagues. It could be college professors. It could be classmates if you're going back to an MBA or going to school. That's a lot of different. It could be former clients. It can be a lot of different roles and organizations. Okay, so that's profile tips. Um, any other questions on your profile? Okay, engagement. So this is going to be a little bit about how to set yourself up for success in applying to jobs on LinkedIn. There are actually steps you should take before you apply to a job. So first off, I always recommend my clients, no matter what's posted online, have a target 10 or 20 companies you're really interested in. Follow them, ring their bell, build connections into those organizations. What ringing the bell does on LinkedIn, and you see that it's in like the upper right, is it's going to have any notifications if the company posts something, opens a job, it's going to show up in your in your um, notification feed and it's going to show up in your news feed as a primary item that you're going to keep informed on. It also gives you more points when you apply to a job from this company on LinkedIn. So when you see so a job... Just, just clarifying that. So having, having the ring your bell, the notifications on gives you more points for that particular job. And follow the company, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, are you going to cover a bit about what the points mean and how they 
how they help you? Well, it's really, it's just how that you're scored in the algorithm. That's, I don't, that's as much as I know. I don't, so I go through LinkedIn certification every year and we try the National Resume Writers Association tries to keep on top of the algorithm that they're using in ranking candidates. And so all we know is to doing this step gives you more weight than someone who didn't do this step. So you might get more views or you may be looked at You'll be ranked higher. higher. So say higher. there's a hundred people, you might rank 10 versus 20. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So back to, so you see a job you're excited about, you want to apply for on LinkedIn. And so do 300 people with easy apply. So do the previous step. Apply, do some personal follow-up. Um, Find someone in the organization. Ideally, you know someone in the organization that can walk your resume in and refer you. Hands down, someone who knows you, not even the hiring manager or the recruiter, but there's someone in that company that knows you and they are willing to walk your resume in, you're most like you're more likely to get an interview. These systems are just so, and the recruiters are so overwhelmed and bombarded with digital applications you're more likely to get an interview by having someone refer you into an organization, hands down. Why it's important if you know no one there to build, try and build networks, try to connect with people, find someone who knows someone in the organization to make um, headway. It also, even if you don't know the recruiter or don't know, like if you see the name, but you don't personally know them, follow up with them. I, and I run this stat all the time. I am often looking for freelancers and of the hundred who apply to a job of mine, one will actually reach out to me. So I will interview that person because that person took effort then just hit the easy apply to um, apply for something with my organization. So do that. It's, it's important, personal outreach, promoting yourself. Job searches today is all about marketing and selling yourself online and in person and leveraging your network, getting as many leads in your funnel, working that funnel, working all different angles of the funnel. It really is sales and marketing of yourself and your career today. Um, the other thing, if you're a premium member on LinkedIn, and I recommend that when you're going through a job search, is you have the ability now, and this is new, where every month... I. I call it chips. You get three chips. And what that means is you get to select three of the applications that you, and it's only during the application process. So once you do this three times in a month, you're out of these chips. But basically you're putting your resume in and you're saying, this is the one of the three jobs I really want this month and feel I'm very qualified for. And that's going to bump you up to the top of that search results list and show that you use your chip. And they call it something different, but show that you use that as part of your application. So question on that. Yeah. Um, so LinkedIn has the apply button. Is that is that where that comes up when you hit the apply button? Because it sends you over to the company website typically, but that's where you would. Make it's that only on the job job applications via LinkedIn. So that's going to be more when you're not redirected to the company website. I see. Yeah. There are a lot of companies where like I do all of my job applications via LinkedIn. So there are many companies who do their whole job application, at least the first piece of the workflow via LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's usually when you like do a quick apply, it's the yeah. very last page. There's just a checkbox that you might have to scroll a little bit for it. I'm not entirely sure, but it's like top talent or top choice or something like yeah. that. And mm -hmm. um, that's where it'll, where it'll be. So if you rush on that last page and hit submit, then you missed it. <laughs> okay. And what about applying, um, so when you when you do the easy apply, it pulls in your LinkedIn profile, right? What about applying both ways? Because you can't tell your LinkedIn, right? But you can tell your resume. <laughs> so. so so there should be a piece in easy apply to ask you what resume you want to use, and you can upload your your personal resume and not the LinkedIn resume. All right, great. Yes, and you can have several different versions of your resume saved mm -hmm. in there as well. Yep. Oh, all right. I haven't I haven't done that. Saving my resume within LinkedIn. Yep. 
And it yeah. automatically saves it when you do an application and you upload your um, an outside resume into the system. Okay, I'll have to look at that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so grow your network. Obviously, connect with everyone who's here today on LinkedIn because you just never know when someone's connected to an opportunity you're looking at. Get out there, go to other virtual events, go to physical networking events um, to get your reach. There's tons of, and if you don't know where to start, look at Meetup, look at your local chambers of commerce. There's the North Dallas Chamber of Commerce. There's Greater Dallas. There's Richardson. I mean, every city has a chamber of commerce. Start there to see what kinds of events and lunches and activities that they do to bring people together. Um See if you've got alumni in your network. So where did you go to school and are there alums at the places you're thinking about and reaching out to them from more of an alumni perspective? Um, there is a difference in connecting versus in mail. So a connect means you're going to add them to your network. It's a shorter message. It's only 300 characters, but then you can, once if they agree to connect with you, you can, you can mail them all day long via LinkedIn. Otherwise, you have a limited number of in-mails you can use every month. Again, you have you get more when you are part of premium. Same with the connects. You get more connects when you're part of premium. Um, and in-mails, you can send a longer email if you're trying to break the ice and introducing yourself to someone or a recruiter that you want to, you know, kind of send your cover letter to and explaining why you're an ideal candidate. This is where you've got to do things going above and beyond just hitting apply online and getting out there and selling yourself into getting an interview. Same time, just you need to be authentic and get comfortable with like, what are the things you're getting comfortable telling your story, presenting yourself, promoting yourself um, and see what starts to like try different things in terms of messaging and outreach and see what resonates for people to actually go like, hey, I'll do a 20 minute Zoom or have a coffee with you or go meet up at an event, ask your network for events they're going to. If you're an introvert and shy, go with a buddy or a colleague to help with breaking the ice. Bring a friend who is more social to help with breaking the ice. There's lots of ways to get out there and network um, if you're a person who's not really into doing that. A question from Rock, how many uh, free, how, with the free version, how many connect requests do you get per day? I would have to, you'd have to look that up online. I don't, it's low and it's not a per day. It's a monthly minimum per month. month. Yeah. Right. So um, it should be clear on their website because when they try to upsell you premium, they're going to tell you the difference between free versus premium. Yeah. I'll look it up. I know you only have five um, being able to add a note per month and then they start over in the beginning of the month. So given that we're in the last week, Use your five this week. If you haven't used them judiciously, use your five to make a personal note connection to you, strategic connections. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So that's engagement, connecting with people, building your network, find opportunities. So the last piece I'm going to cover and what I like to say here is if you are not frequently on LinkedIn, you haven't posted some original content. I like to say crawl, walk, and then run and using LinkedIn in terms of posting content that you're comfortable posting. So um, what I mean about that is there are ways and places and hidden places to go become seen on LinkedIn in terms of publishing thought leadership, publishing content. So I like to say the easiest thing to do is to like other people's posts. And if there's something that resonates to reshare it on your profile and to add a comment, like I reshared today's event on my profile and added a, a little comment about it. I've reshared jobs before and added a comment about it. So um, see things that you think your network would be interested in or to show people what you're interested in. Um, that's just one way to just start to get comfortable in, in, in navigating and using the platform from a content perspective. Are there people doing things you aspire to do? Like, are there thought leaders in the industry? Are there peers that you really um, admire where they've gotten in their career? 
engage with their articles. So they're going to probably posting a lot of content, engage, provide your point of view, like, share, etc. So you can get targeted with who you're following and who you're engaging with. So this is one of the ones that used to be really hidden and now it's a little easier to get to. So LinkedIn generates articles for any member in the community to contribute to. And so if you've ever seen, like I have on my profile, a top badge for career development coaching, others have top badges for project management, you name it. It's because they are in the top 5% of quality, insightful posts to LinkedIn specific articles. That is the only way you get that badge is by contributing to LinkedIn articles and being in the top 5% worldwide. And so how you can start to, again, engage, be seen, different perspective is now the contribute expertise is a button on your, if you go to your homepage of LinkedIn, it's in your, where you could post, it's a button you can click. It's going to take you to an area where you can start to see the different categories of articles. So if you're a project manager, there's definitely project management is going to be one of the areas or program management. If you're in HR, HR management, so like resume writing is under HR management. There's talent and development. There's all kinds of categories. See what they're asking for, thoughts and opinions on, and you can contribute content there. If you want to start to get your own, and this is to help you be differentiator, you're really opinionated. You've got lots of expertise. You know what the best practices are, how you would run a, a program office or strategic initiatives. Um, you could either post, you can do long form posts on your LinkedIn profile itself. You can post articles from your LinkedIn profile, or you can set up a newsletter that people subscribe to where you can po create something. So I've got a client right now where he's trying to stand himself apart in, in AI and in particular AI and financial services. Um, and so he has his own newsletter from his own personal LinkedIn profile, AI and FSI, and he's publishing about every other week, some sort of perspective, what he's seeing, applications of AI and FSI. And it's more of a consistent put, push of content that then his subscribers get and they only get it not just in LinkedIn, but they also subscribers also get it in email to their email inbox. So that's different ways. If you really want to, if you have an opinion, like to write, have lots of perspective you want to push out there to help differentiate you in your career. That's how you can use LinkedIn from a content perspective. Okay, do you feel like you learn, you know a lot more about LinkedIn after our time together today? Yes. <laughs> yes. I know it's overwhelming I'm, and, you know, it looks sometimes it's simple sometimes and the algorithm's constantly changing. That's why I have to go through recertification every year to know what, what did they do? Um, but just trying to stay, keep a pulse of new features, functions, et cetera, um, that are on there. Uh, well, thank you for uh, spending time with me today. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, visit. You're welcome to follow me or connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and I do offer, you know, complimentary one-on-ones if you want to visit and learn more. I do. Um, and then the offer I have down there is I do offer resume and LinkedIn reviews with feedback. So if that's something that you want someone to give you just some more specifics on things you could add or improve to your resume and LinkedIn, um, as I do offer that, and that's available off of my website that's um, listed there as well. So just with that, any other questions today? So one that Charles had, and I know you said start with the long posts and then articles, but uh, do you have a preference on being in order to be visible? Do you recommend posts or articles? Is one seen more than others? Um, I think to start with posts are going to be the easiest just to kind of get used to, uh, articles, you get images, there's things you can do formatting. You can do to articles. I would just get comfortable posting first and then seeing if you want to do more after you get into where the of, are you posting once a week? Or are you posting once a month? 
like think about like the frequency of how you're doing it. So your own original content post would be preferable than sharing someone else's article. To start with, yes, that's going to be the easiest. And I'm putting in the chat the um, website for the freelancing platform. Amy, I have a question. Um, yeah. I heard that when you comment, you should comment for uh, 12 words minimum in order to continue to drive up your score in LinkedIn since you're certified. Is there any truth to that? There is. Um, the, the What they're trying to get to is not having people do these like three word posts to because there are people out there that are just trying to improve their visibility. And LinkedIn, there are catches in the algorithm to look for quality content and insightful content. So like when I talked about the badge earlier, it's not just about the number of times I've added my two cents to their articles. It's more important on, well, how many people thought what I posted, not just did they like it, did they actually put the insightful like emoji to it? So they're very particular on measuring quality content. So the length of what you're posting is going to be a piece to, is this a quality piece of content or just a AI generating a bunch of stuff that isn't relevant or worth anything? Got it. Okay. But when other people comment, when you comment on someone's article and you're insightful, is it driving your, your it's score? Both. It's going to drive both. It's both. Okay. Okay, that's what I thought. So do you ever message people or let them know to go ahead and, and like like your content or find your content insightful? I don't, there are people, so there are groups okay. of LinkedIn mm -hmm. kind of content generators where they'll let each other know, hey, come like my stuff. Right. LinkedIn is going to get very savvy on connected people liking the same stuff over and over and over again. Because mm -hmm. um, we had that comment come up in the UT Dallas class I taught of like, okay, not everyone in the same class go recommend each other because it's going to, there. there's a thing about it, like you giving a recommendation to one person they will recommend back, it almost negates itself. So um, again, this is, to me, I tell everyone using these platforms, building a resume, telling your story, be authentic and be transparent. I don't want to do things. I'd rather build my reputation and my awareness authentically than, you know, trying to game the system. system. Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay. What other questions do we have? We have about 10 minutes left. So y'all can ask away. I have one. So for, uh, for your posts, I, I heard that some people like to, um, include images in their posts mm -hmm. and, um, Saying that images actually makes your post stand out. Do you agree with that comment? Yes, I do. Okay. And I've heard recently they've moved also towards video, like some of the other yes. social media. So video okay. as well. Great question. Who else? Uh, I guess I have one question. Can y'all hear me? This is Andy. We can. Oh, so my question just is with regards to the skills on uh, LinkedIn. And originally I just had a few, but then I started adding every job that I applied for, you know, skills that were relevant that I held. And now I'm like, uh, I've got a whole bunch, but do, does it really matter? Um, you know, so those new ones, um, I, I I don't have anybody that's ne necessarily recommended me for those skills. So I was just wondering if that matters. It doesn't. Um, Endorsements, it doesn't. Okay. no. There, it, was, uh, it was one of those things that went haywire when they introduced the feature. And so they just, it's not part of any piece of um, LinkedIn today. Oh, okay. That's that's good to know. I, uh, I figured just an overall recommendation would hold a whole lot more weight. So... Okay, thank you. Can you see um, my LinkedIn profile? Or, um, can you still see my sharing or do I need to reshare? Yes, yeah, so we can see okay. your profile. So you're going to be able to show us where how to reorder them. Yeah, give me just a second. Okay, so just a comment on that too. Like sometimes you're pursuing several different types of roles 
And, you know, like your LinkedIn is going to be pretty stable on like your resume and cover letters that you are going to customize each time. But if you find yourself going down a particular path, say you're in project management, you're going down that path, you might want to have those skills higher up on the list. And then maybe you switch paths a month from now and most of the positions you're applying for are a more technical or engineering type, then you might reorder them at that time. So in general, your LinkedIn is going to be pretty stable. But if you switch directions, which sometimes you do, then that can be moved. And LinkedIn algorithm does like to see that you're actively managing your, your profile as well. The other thing too, if you happen to get to that hundred skills, what you can start to think about is um, like some people might have project management as one skill and then IT project management as another you can get rid of the project management one. When you have skills that kind of encapsulate a bunch of different skills all together, you can get rid of the single ones. Um, it just will help you in just maximizing the skills area of LinkedIn. Okay. I think I'm at that point. So thank you. So I just hit the, um, the pencil to edit my skills section. And then here with the three dots, is a button that says reorder. And so see the little hamburger three um, lines. Mm -hmm. I can go down here. Again, this is where the top, this is where your order, the, what's your top 10 here? The first two here is what everyone's gonna see on your profile right away. And then in the algorithms, it's the top 10 that's ordered here. And I can come down here. It's just in my, take the, my e-commerce skill and maybe I'll move it up to there. And then once you do your moves, you just hit the X bar and it's saved. And that's it. So, so when you do that and you go up, so can you can you go up to the top then in your profile because this is what i i um i don't know i just got into a circular problem with my skills and it became a real mess so i just got rid of everything and started over and i just put the five like the the, the like it looked like i could have sworn that the five like how how i reordered them when you were just there where you just went through it right Mm -hmm. the top skills these are the five right so these five you're saying if see so these are ordered differently from what i had on oh. there so wait a minute they they are But but this is linking to the other stuff, right? Because if you look at it, your, is, it does your, have to be in your hundred list. It, the skills must come from your inventory on your profile, but yeah. it's going to be in a different order. So they're the same skills, but a different order. Yes, you pick, you select. So I'm going in to edit my about section. And here's where you go skills. Right. And, and see how these are ordered differently because in my profile, my top two is career development coaching and resume writing. And so I can go, so because I have five here, that's it. I can't that's add another. Right, right. <laughs> but I can kill one. So if you delete one out of there, does it take I it can out of your add list? one, it has to come from what's already on my profile. It has to come from the 100 in my profile already. Okay. And you're saying that the the other list that you were at before, those top two are because are of the way I ordered at. it. Is yes, and it's what is seen on when you look at my profile. When like an like an outsider would look at your profile. Yes, right? that's the only skills they're gonna see until they hit show all. Okay. So which matters more, the top two here or the top five up top in the ranking? So you know? the linking yeah. means nothing. The linking means nothing to your about and to your experiences. Um, it's just a way to 
visually show what you're capable of doing. It's the, it's the ranking of your skills. It's this section right here. Oh. All right. So, now, Jamie, Anna, now we only have a few more minutes. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about regarding the about section? Any recommendations with that? Yeah, I mean, about... It's back to make sure your like mine's more geared towards being a service provider, but mm -hmm. make sure it's clear. So I, I have my personal brand promise. Um, make sure the target job titles you're looking for are in your about. Make sure a lot of your key skills and competencies are in your about. Put the how to contact you, your email and your phone number. So it's easy for someone who's not connected with you to reach out to you. Those are like just some quick tips to, to showcase. Don't just do a few sentences like really. And I normally do a structure like this. I have certain headlines and certain areas um, I work on with my clients in terms of what are their key accomplishments in their career so far? What's their key differentiating skills? Um, what do others p say about them? So that's just kind of some of the things that you could do to beef up. This area is like 2,500 characters. So you can put a lot in here. And I just put in a lot of keywords, a lot of job, target job titles. Okay, very good. Okay, one last question. Does anyone else have a burning question they want answered while we have an expert here? Do you have a banner, by the way? Tailor it, use Canva, put your contact info, put your target job titles in the banner. It's just... While it's not used in an algorithm, it's the first thing when someone looks at your profile, besides your profile picture that they're going to look at. Mm -hmm. Just it's another bulletin board. It's another advertising. Yes. Excellent. Well, this has been very informative. We're very happy to have you and just um, such great information. And I know that everyone really enjoyed and learned a lot. So awesome. thank you again, Jamie, and definitely um, take time to connect with Jamie and all those others on the call. And um, if y'all have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us at Career Ministry. We're happy to help. Okay, y'all have a great week. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a good day.